Invisible Walls, episode 63, right here on GameTrailers.com. I'm Shane Satterfield, editor-in-chief of the site. Things are a little slow after E3, but I think we've cobbled together a pretty nice show for you guys. Cobbled being the operative word. <laughs> One thing I know we've cobbled together is a really good panel, and sitting on the show this week is Marcus Beer. Hello, cherubs. <laughs> Cherub. Patrick Morales. Uh, hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> And Miguel Lopez, who promises to say something today. Hello, friends. <laughs> is, that, is that better? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Daniel Bloodworth here today. Hey, hey. And Ryan Stevens is sitting on the soundboard since Johnny C is out. But he will be mic'd up later. He will. He'll be. Actually, we're having a ton of people roll in and out of the show today, so stay tuned and try to keep up. Containment failure in lab one. Warning. Containment failure in lab one and two. So we always complain about how the Wii never gets quality third-party games or the third-party games that are released for it or half-assed ports or whatever. Here we are to talk about The Conduit, one of the rare games that was actually built from the beginning for the Wii specifically. Lots of hype behind this game. Miguel, you've been reviewing this game. How, how did it net out at the end? Actually, uh, it's Brandon Jones who was reviewing it. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> I was helping him capture footage. Um, so I played it, and... Well, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that validates the editorial authenticity of this site. You right, played this, it. This segment's I done. I played the game. <laughs> no, it's... Uh, I like the multiplayer a lot. I think there's a good foundation there. Um, you know, cool weapons. There's a lot of cool modes. The way that things feel, you know, when you're shooting, when you're running around, like, all that stuff kind of feels right. And, uh, you know, as Bloodworth will we'll talk about soon... The way that you could sort of uh, mess with the controls makes it so that even if you don't like the way the game feels outright, you could get in there and tweak enough stuff so that it actually plays in a way that works for you. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, before, we, before we jump away from multiplayer, can you talk a bit more about it? How many players can play at once? How many modes? Are there vehicles? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's no vehicles. It's actually, uh, it feels kind of like a throwback, you know? Think back to the days of like playing GoldenEye. But just imagine that on, you know, kind of a larger scale online. You can play with 12 people, you know, when, when you so break... So six aside? <clears throat> yeah, six aside when you break it down to the team stuff. But, you know, there, there's plenty of, like, free-for-all modes, too. And that's, you know, like, my favorite mode is, uh, it's, like, basically a deathmatch variant where, if you remember uh, Oddball from Halo, you, you basically have the doodad. You pick it up, and then you got to haul ass away from the people who are chasing you. Like, that, that's really cool. There's another mm. one called Bounty Hunter that's pretty cool, too. It's uh, essentially, you know, a map full of people, but you can only kill one person without getting, without getting points docked from you. So, yeah, that, that, that stuff is pretty cool. Bloodworth has, uh, I, I think we might have some divergent opinions in terms of the single player here. What do you think? Yeah, well, I, 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 I think we had a very different experience in terms of the difficulty. <laughs> You're having a hard time, right? I had a hard time, like, toward the end. Uh, <laughs> Whoa! Uh, Bloodworth uh, with a knife and no, twisting well, away. We watch this man so, Mi so Miguel, you're sh at games, games, are you? <laughs> he, he was trying to be as nice as possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, so, Miguel, you think the game was pretty tough. Then, Daniel, you played it over the weekend. You didn't feel like it was that difficult, right? Is that yeah, safe to say? I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I died maybe once per level, like when I'd come across a new enemy or something, you know, and then I just, you know, learned to, to deal with it. And then, you know, as he said, the last two levels are quite a bit tougher because... Uh, as they, they should be. Yeah, you know, they just... Guys have more shielding. You have, you know, less options as far as the weapons that you're handed and stuff like but that. But doesn't it feel like it's it's... More difficult, but in kind of a crappy way, like a little it bit does. cheap. Those last two levels do feel a little cheap. Yeah. In, in a way. Yeah, playing through the game, like you'll come across areas that it's more difficult in terms of like you have to figure out the pieces of the puzzle. You know, mm -hmm. it's not that the AI is outsmarting you or like you know there, there's something particularly challenging to figure out. It's just like all right, I gotta kill these guys first. I gotta disarm, disarm these stupid invisible mines, and then I get to go and blow up the portal. You know. Yeah, I think the ghost mines are probably the most useless thing in the single player game. They just slow things down. You're almost never going to run into them because your, your little uh, all-seeing eye is going to start beeping like crazy when you get close to one. So you just have to pull it out and then try to disable it before some enemy comes up and hits you. You know. Did you enjoy it, Bloodworth? I, I did. I, I actually did like it. I think it's, it's pretty fast-paced. You know, the, the, the alien enemies will, will come up 
and get in your face a lot, and sometimes they'll try to outflank you and, and that kind of thing. So even though they all have spawn points, like spawning is a big part of the game. Like there's the portals where the bigger guys will come through, and then there's these little egg sacks that other guys will hatch from. So it, a lot of the strategy is making sure you get to those as quickly as possible and destroy them before they can spawn. Yeah, yeah. because they, they'll, you know, it, it'll get to a point where in some scenarios there's like a fixed number of guys that will spawn and come at you. Mm -hmm. But in others, if you hang around too long, they'll just keep coming out and keep coming out. And then, you know, if you don't make, take decisive action immediately, then you're screwed. I'm curious, how does the aiming work out with regards? It's not a Wii Motion Plus game, I don't think. No, no, it's, it's, all, it's all straight up, you know. Um, you just aim and point. Just yeah, that, that, that's the thing. They experimented much with Motion Plus, and they didn't find any benefit for the conduit. And I think it's because, like, it's all, you know, it's cursor-based. I could totally see that. Yeah, you don't really need it. Yeah. What I did with the, in regards to tweaking the controls is, you know, first up, you know, I don't really like the bounding box concept that some of the Wii games have, you know, so I just, like, reduced that bounding box to as small as I could. Uh -huh. And then I kind of, I think I... Uh, I boosted my turning speed, but then I lowered my cursor movement a little bit so oh. I could be more precise. I feel like all eyes are on this game right now to sell yeah. well. Like other publishers, you know, everybody, you know, Sega, whoever's going to possibly pick up high voltages next games, you know, they are expecting this, you know, to do well. And if it doesn't do well, then they're not going to bother with those kinds of games on the Wii. You yeah. really think that's the case, though, man? I think that might just be the community that's putting those crazy expectations on it, you know? No, I mean, it is the developers. I mean, a lot of developers looked at Mad World to see how that sold to determine whether they felt like a triple-A game was viable on the Wii where they spent a ton of money and, you know, really work on the production values of it. I mean, I heard that firsthand from developers and publishers that, that they looked in that game tanked. So, on the whole, would you guys recommend buying this or renting it? Now, the single player's anywhere from five to eight hours long. Do you someone who's a Wii owner? Only a Wii owner? Yeah, sure. Yeah? yeah. Buy it. Right, yeah. Worth the 50 bucks. What about you, Bloodworth? Do you recommend it for a purchase? I haven't played the multiplayer, so I think that's where you know, my big difference is. I mean, if you're going to be somebody that just wants to play single-player experience, you're probably going to be running it. Yeah. You know? So it sounds like unless you, if you only have a Wii and you're starving for online multiplayer fragging action worth a buy, yeah. otherwise rent it if you're curious. Yeah, and you know, for what it's worth, it seems like this game was designed more for multiplayer just because the single player is so understated and, I don't know, doesn't seem very thoughtfully designed in my opinion. All right. Uh. All right, now there's not a lot of games coming out right now, so we're going to shift gears a little bit with the show. We're going to start talking about some more, uh, more topic-heavy topics. What's in the news? That was the worst intro <laughs> Topic-heavy <ever>. topics. <laughs> It's a double serving I like the topic. Thing. I, I really mean, know what you're talking about. Anyway, it's, we're going to talk about big rumors floating around the industry. We always do that a little bit on the show, but we're going to do a little more over the next couple weeks. Yeah, because it's f all coming out. Yeah. And the big rumor right now is that DJ Hero is going to cost an arm and all your fingers. Which makes it really useless, because how can you play <laughs> DJ Hero one arm? <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a, a 120 bones. Welcome the to the show, right Ryan, now. by the way. Oh, yeah. that's me, Ryan. Yeah. You may know me from other episodes. <laughs> or from shows about three months ago. You haven't been on the show for a while. I was barely conscious during the E3 show. Yeah, we all were. <laughs> yeah, the rumor is it's going to be 120 bucks. Uh, it's been uh, floating around on some sites you can buy it on. But, I mean, I don't know. My, my personal opinion is this can always change. People are just putting things down so they can grab pre-orders and the like. Well, that's that's the estimate from GameStop, right? Yeah. But okay. it makes sense that it's going to be that price because, again, you're, talking about, you know, you're not talking about a revamped piece of technology like the Guitar Hero stuff, which the more you make them when you're slapping the new facings on them, they come down in price. Yeah. You're talking about a brand new, unique piece of kit. And this goes back to something I said two weeks ago that you know, Activision have got this and they've got Tony Hawk, and these are all driven by these gimmicky little peripherals. I mean... How many different DJ games do they think they're going to squeak out? You buy this for 120 different bucks, and you know you were saying before, and they're saying that it's a platform, it's not a peripheral. Right. I disagree with you. I think it's a bunch of bollocks. Because I platform, didn't say that. I said they said that. <laughs> All right, they said that, but I'm disagreeing with them because it was a bunch of bollocks. Because at the end of the day, it's a f***ing overpriced peripheral gimmick. Well, I think you see it. You see are it always the, overpriced, though. You see in the past, Activision pushed the envelope, though. I mean, when they first started making Guitar Hero, everybody was like, You're, no one's going to pay that much money for a plastic guitar. No one's going to pay that much money over what they would pay for just the game. Well, they, we were wrong, and they were right. So no, they, they here's were, another case where they're like, all right, let's think back to the beginning of the DJ Hero franchise, or the, of the Guitar Hero franchise. 
we thought we were pushing the envelope by making people do this. Well, now it's time to do it again. So I'm just wondering if this is going, you know, if this the third time is going to be a bit much because they came up with Guitar Hero and absolutely the first, you know, Guitar Hero game harmonics, a phenomenal game. And wasn't it and 70? Um, I think no, it, was uh, it was like 99. Yeah. Really? I uh -huh. think it was 99. Okay. But the other thing is that you know the next iteration actually did wasn't led by uh, Activision. It was led by Rock Band. And you know right. they brought the drums out and everything, and that sold really, really well. But then last year, these games took a pounding across the board because people didn't have the money to, sp to spend on them. Well, all you know is about the money. I think people just looked at it and they're like, why do I need to spend another $200? I already have two guitars. I have a drum kit. I have a mic. Just give me more songs. And that's where, people, where these publishers are betraying their own words and saying this is a platform. Well, if it's a platform, you put out the platform and you just release product for the platform. You yeah. don't keep releasing a new platform every year. And especially with these sort of, uh, these sort of games, you don't have to release even disc copies anymore. Everybody's connected to PSN or Xbox Live. Why don't you just put the games, you know, the download sales have been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just put the new tracks out there and save yourself a load of money and just make it easy and stop, you know, clogging up, clogging up the shelves with it. Well, I think at the end of the day, and, and they made this, Activision made this argument when I was doing some pre-E3 interviews with them over the new Guitar Hero, which has the number five. So you assume every, when they give it a real number, it's going to be a full-fledged sequel. At the end of the day, it really has just... People can jump in whenever they want, and you can have four people playing guitar instead of one. So I asked them, I'm like, well, how do you rationalize having people spend $60 on this brand new quote unquote game when it's really just a collection of songs? They're like, well, you know, there's 100 songs in the game, or however many songs there are. You figure you spend $1.50, $2 for each one of those songs, look at how much money you're spending. So the way we look at it is we're giving you a huge pack of songs. And then we're giving you these couple of new features pretty much for free, and you're getting the songs for half price. And when they mentioned it that way, I was like, all right, but it probably shouldn't be called Guitar Hero 5. But you're not really get, you're getting the songs to you know, play along to, but you know, it's not as if the songs you can then rip them all to your iPod right. and you know, take, them off, take them off that well, way. Well, I mean, getting back to the DJ Hero controller, I mean, Shane, you got to use it. I mean, see, I mean, how solid is this new DJ Hero controller? Is it worth the extra money? It it's got more moving parts, right? I'll say this much. I mean, I have both regular Technique 1200s and I have CDJs, the CD turntables, and it feels just like the CDJ turntables. It has the same amount of sort of resistance when you pull the platter back. Uh, when you release it, it feels good. When you scratch it, it has just enough resistance so you feel like you're getting into it and it's not just some flimsy sort of frisbee sitting on top of another piece of plastic sliding back and forth. It does feel good. The crossfader feels a little loose, maybe. Hmm. Um, and it would be nice if there was kind of a notch in the center that you could feel so you'd know when you were basically split right between two tracks. That's one thing I've... So, I've, so, so it's a quality build, but is it, is it, it worth is. the extra money? That's I know a, moving parts cost money. But it is a hard, it's gonna, like hard, it's gonna last. It's going to be a hard, hard sell. I feel like, based upon my limited exposure to it, it feels solid state and like it will last. But, dude, $60 for a piece of plastic to play a game, that's, And isn't, that's this, a isn't it a mm -hmm. slightly harder sale? I mean, guitars, everyone's familiar with guitars, they understand how it right. works. Here, I mean, if you're trying to sell it to a DJ, like, that's a cheap price for a turntable, but oh, you're, really trying, cheap. you're trying to sell it to someone you're trying to hook. Isn't, that a, isn't it a little more of a stretch? They should probably go a little cheaper? I think they should go cheaper, definitely. I yeah. don't think that they can go over $100 for this game. Even $100, I think, is pushing it. Like, they're just going to have to accept it. They're going to have to lose money on the plastic. I mean, that's all there is to it. <laughs> I ain't going to die waiting on salvation. As long as we still got guns, we're going to fight. All right, another controversy floating around right now is Left 4 Dead 2. Now, there's fans who are trying to boycott the game. <laughs> 34,728 as of Monday morning. There's a lot of people who are pissed off. I mean, it was shown at E3, Microsoft press conference. Looked really cool. It's moved to New Orleans. Some cool new weapons, uh, but it feels like... Oh, my understanding is that it feels more like Left 4 Dead 1.5. Yeah, I don't agree with that. But there's a lot of people who ha are kind of pissed off that the Team Fortress route of supporting the this particular game has hasn't materialized. The free much. lunch is over basically, and they're they're not <laughs> happy about it. Well, yeah. Well, the team. I mean, the Team Fortress support has been. Above and beyond crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, been insane. It's, been it's like almost an entirely problem. different game by now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and it was if you didn't buy the Orange Box, Team Fortress is only a twenty dollars game normally, and I think they had crazy sales where it was ten dollars or like four ninety six or whatever yeah. crazy Valve stuff. So, but, I, uh, Patrick got to play Left 4 Dead too. I did. That's it. How did it feel? 
Uh, you know what? I want to say that it's almost the same. <laughs> it Honestly, is. it's not even one point five. <laughs> I think it's exactly that. I mean, there's new levels or whatever, a couple of new weapons. But yeah, I mean, they have this whole melee system going on. But you know, for the most part, it, it's pretty similar. I, it, but is that just like an initial look? Because some of the more it subtle is. things with the director, you're not going to yeah. see on your first playthrough and yeah. stuff like that. To be I fair, I didn't see a lot of the things with the director. I was supposed to see after I'd played the whole game. To be uh, fair, I've only played two points. levels, but they did mention that they did implement some new director things. For instance, depending on how well you're doing, um, they'll not only affect the types of infected you get, but also the path of the level now, too, so that every single playthrough isn't exactly the same. That's good. I'm, I'm kind of split on this controversy, because I loved Left 4 Dead, but I still think it's one of the most overpriced games ever released. I think I mean, what it delivered, yeah. Four, four, four great levels, but it should have been a $40 game, not a $60 game on the, on the 360. And we've seen what the versus or the survival mode where you just like hang out. That's Kill that's zones. okay, but it's, yeah, it is not the level of Team Fortress. But then again, I mean, if you're an orange box guy on the 360, you haven't seen any of that Team Fortress stuff. It's right. strictly been PC. Why are people so pissed off? Well, well this, I, this, there's this, a we don't want to pay for a game. And but, but, I mean, well, no, game said there will be some. Well, yeah, it, there's it's, a whole manifesto. It's only been out for like six if months. you search right? Left 4 Dead uh, boycott, there's actually a Steam community group. Uh, Alpha Dead 2 boycott, and they say they are committed to holding Valve to its promise of free continual updates to Left 4 Dead in order to build and sustain the community. They believe the re the release of Left 4 Dead 2 as a standalone sequel will split the communities and decrease the quality of multiplayer gaming. The uh, annou the announced content for the game does not warrant a full standalone game. It's more like an expansion pack or a standalone expansion pack right now. Th and these should become updates free or otherwise for Left 4 Dead. That's the that's actually the line I do have a problem with with, with this uh, is that if you're going to update stuff, I am I'd be happier for Valve to go perhaps the Bethesda route where they've released four really good pieces of uh, of uh, uh, software to update their original game. And I mean, when they bought Left 4 Dead, did they just think that they're just going to get free content for the rest of their lives? Well, I mean, I, th I, th think this, this, I think I think people thought there was going to be some. Well, they're, it's not so much that, but they essentially released Left 4 Dead uh, in, incomplete. Right. Yeah, you couldn't even play Versus on uh, two yeah. of the maps. Though, yeah. Which is just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, a common sentiment was we paid to beta test the game for you guys for six months, essentially. Yeah. And I, I agree with them. I mean, they announced Left 4 Dead 2 really quickly after they just announced Left 4 Dead. They, yeah, because they saw the big pile of money sitting in their bank account. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I do understand the, the frustration. It's going to be, it's, it's going to speak. I well, mean, yeah, I, I, think, I think the fact that it was shown at the Microsoft press conference, you know, I mean, it's another, you know, Microsoft have probably put pressure on Valve to put this out for this this Christmas because we know Microsoft don't have a huge amount of stuff and yes it will sell well on Steam as well but we also know that Valve have recently stated that they don't like programming for the PS3. And I just wonder how many people on this petition or whatever are just butthurt PlayStation fans who just don't want anybody to get the game or just are upset that again it was announced exclusively for the 360. I, I could, th this actually kind of harks back to almost online gaming for about six or seven years ago where you know you'd have games and people would release you know free maps for uh, for the for multiplayer and to be fair I mean the only stuff that's really come out for Left 4 Dead has been stuff from the modders like the nudie expansion back the uh, the nudie views that came out a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago yeah. and there's been a couple of others and Valve hasn't really been pushing this and this is well now we know why right well now <laughs> they've been making a how, brand how much time was between there was a big amount of time between Team Fortress actually getting new content though I mean yeah. it's still the game is really only what six seven months old at this point yeah I, well, never got content on the consoles. I think yeah, the other that's thing true is that as the well. Steam community are so used to Valve treating them really well that Valve They're spoiled. Uh, Valve Gabe has spoiled them. Personally answering all of their emails. Well, you know, <laughs> Valve has spoiled them with the content, you know, whether it's been you know the the quality of Orange Box, Portal, these various uh, the titles that have come out over the years that have always been top quality. The ease of modability with Half Life One, which spawned Counter Strike, which was then released free and you know really updated to be a, a quality game. So I think you know there's the business side where you know Valve are now saying, okay, well we can make a lot of money out of this, and Microsoft are probably giving us a nice little backhander to bring this out for the 360 this year. And then the other side, you've got the PC community, which I think that's what this is: the PC community yeah. who are used to being treated really well, and they're like. Oh wow, well, we just you know we just got shafted. Well, what I, is Gabe's response to this? He's not a guy that usually shies away. He, from he said there will be support. He's yeah. like, hey, we're not backing out on our promise, but you know they really feel like it is a real sequel, and you know it's like the stuff that they're adding is, like I said, I think it's maybe a little more subtle, but it's not stuff that you can just like maybe throw into the game right now, like alternative paths and 
yeah. you know, weather effects and stuff like that. I mean, I don't remember Gabe ever lying in the no. past. Everything he ever says, he delivers on, so why would people doubt Except him? Except for that one enemy in that early Half-Life 2 trailer that kind of, like, goes up and, like, spikes the guy right in the stomach. That thing was never in Half-Life 2. I'm still waiting. <laughs> still waiting, Gabe. Did he you promise you it was going to be in there? He came to me in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> really big wings. I'm sorry. He I need better what, dreams. <laughs> I, I think what would make sense for Valve and to, you know, to one appease the community, but also make perhaps financial sense for the PC version in particular, is to have an option to actually integrate, because we're talking about basically the same engine, is integrate Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 into one bigger game. So when you download it, you can access you know, all the original levels from the Left 4 Dead 2 menu. So you, know, you may not have some of the new features, but it transports that community into, into the new version, and everybody gets to play all the different levels, old, you know, original rules and the new school rules, if you will. Let that me ask you this, though, Marcus. Let's say you started Valve, and you started this company that's only a couple hundred people strong, and you had the opportunity to release Left 4 Dead 2, and you know that literally you're going to sell a million and a half copies of that game in 30 days. Are you going to not release that and do what you just said? No, I'd, I, what I'd actually do is consider Morales, that, you're wincing over there. You would, you, <laughs> you would, you would turn your back on let, that money. Let me, let me your ask, company that you money. put your ass on the line to Let create. me Money's answer money. your question for you, all right? First of all, Valve is based on PC gaming. That's how the company got so successful, PC gaming. I would basically look and say, yes, Left 4 Dead 2 on the 360, because people don't really care as much on the 360, they will go and shell out, because it sold like f***ing gangbusters on the 360. They did really well. Yeah, three months in the NPD, I think. Yeah, yeah. so that's, you know, the, the console guys, we will go out and do that for them. The PC guys, who have been our bread and butter and continually are my, our bread and butter, because, let's face it, the amount of units they shift over Steam make a much bigger profit margin than anything that goes through retail and anything that goes through 360. That's where they should look at doing something slightly different to keep that, conti- uh, that community going. Up. What the hell is going on with Activision, man? Every week it seems like they're in the news. We already talked about the DJ Hero price, which wasn't such newsworthy as it was sort of rumorish. Now this is a reported quote from the CEO of Activision talking to the Times in London, and what did they say, Marcus? Bobby Kotick said, I am getting concerned about Sony. The PlayStation 3 is losing a bit of momentum, and they don't make it easy for me to support the platform. It's expensive to develop for the console, and the Wii and the Xbox are just selling better. Games generate a better return on invested capital on the Xbox than on the PlayStation. Now... Yeah, I think Bobby Kotick might have actually been bullied as a child or something, because ever since they've come into this money and position of being the biggest third-party publisher in the world, he's been slapping it around like crazy. First off, I think it's intense. I mean, you know, it's intensely arrogant of the guy to say, oh, they don't make it easy for me to make these decisions. Well... That I mean, if he's in but charge, it is Sony's job to make it easy for him to make those. But decisions. you know, if he is ma- if he's in charge of making all the decisions on what games are published and what games are let go, I'd actually query his judgment skills right now. Given yeah, what that's probably cut. not a good idea to have one person doing all that. Yeah, the the other thing I'd say is that it's incredibly worrying that the pub the the CEO of the world's largest third party publisher is so. Frigging short sighted because we know that there's a 10 year lifespan on, on the, th- the PS3. Oh, there are more holes in that statement than Swiss cheese, man. I mean, yeah. I don't even know where to start. It's like, oh, well, my, first of all, Microsoft had a year head start, so obviously their install base is bigger, so obviously you're going to sell more games for that platform. Yeah, this, this follows on from his quote at E3 where he's like, I'm very disappointed there was no price cut from any of the big boys. And like I said, the whole... I think that's all he's asking for. That's just another way to lobby for Sony to cut the price of his console. But as we said a couple of weeks ago, this is the guy who's also, his company is also in, introducing games like DJ Hero, Guitar Hero 74 and a half, and Tony Hawk, which are not going to be cheap you know, cheap yeah. games in their own right. So I, he does say one thing of common sense in that, you know, it's cheaper to develop for the Wii and the Xbox. The Wii, yes, it is a much cheaper platform, you know, the, but you look at what they've developed for it. I mean, Call of Duty's come out, hasn't been the, you know, hasn't been the best version. In fact, yeah. it's been kind of buggy and kind of crap, to be honest with you. The Xbox is is easy, much easier for developers to do because you get, well, you get a PC port ver- version free. What's interesting is they're not really doing a huge amount of PC games. Right. Um, so yes, the PS3, like any you know, newish 
console and you know it is tricky to develop on valve have confirmed this they don't like developing for the ps3 it's complicated it's pushing you know it's really pushing the boundaries with the cell cell structure but to say that you know i don't know how i can imagine supporting the ps3 in two years time when you've got to imagine that the sales on the ps3 with a price drop which is going to come in the next 12 months some way shape or form whether it be a psp slim which is cheaper or a ps3 slim rather or, or an actual price drop on the bigger machine the PS3 is going to be around and it's going to sell and it's going to, you know, it's really hitting its stride game-wise right now. Yeah. I will put my hands up and I will say I, over the last sort of like 10 weeks, I have spent more time playing my PS3 and I've barely touched my Xbox. Mm -hmm. I'm and right there with you. I've been playing my PS3 a lot more this year. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, I'm beginning Now to I have a friends it. list build up a little bit from playing Killzone and now those people are starting to play other games. I actually have people that I could interact with on there. Well, I think another thing is it's going to become easier to develop for the PS3. I don't, I mean, back in the day, the PS1 and the PS2 were also, like, notoriously difficult. I mean, I think for the PS1, for uh, Polyphony Digital, they actually were made a pedal. So while you were coding, you could actually, like, step through, like, the memory architecture one by one. So you can picture someone coding, like, this, like, assembly in C++ floating all over the place. And actually, like, working a pedal like a sewing machine as well, so you can just, like, optimize everything. Yeah. But, you know, they release these tools, they make the documentation, and you're just going to see better and better games and, like, quicker development cycles. Yeah, I mean, so it's just, it's, it's bullshit. I mean, Ports think about it. Are they Ports. not going to release Modern Warfare 2 for the play? Hell no. Well, you know that's By coming. now, these developers are fine at porting something from the 360 to the PS3. It is not rocket science anymore. You're not going to turn your back on a million sales for a game like... Modern Warfare 2, that's just money sitting there. I mean, he did say that, you know, I mean, we know that all the games are going to come out this year. Um, he's inferring that, uh, you know, he's trying to hold a gun over Sony's head. And I honestly think that if push comes to shove, given the type of games they have coming out, Sony can survive not having Guitar Hero, can survive not having Tony Hawk, especially when Skate is actually way better right now than, than the Tony Hawk franchise. I think they can, you know, Modern Warfare 2 will come out. Will Modern Warfare 3? Well, yes, I, it will. There's yeah. no way in hell they're not going to release it. If it doesn't, yes, three. if it doesn't, Ubisoft with Rainbow Six and Ghost Recon and EA with the Battlefield series would be more than happy to fill that void. It's just yeah. a stupid And let's not forget Atari. Comment. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I think I'm still liking Ghostbusters. I will yeah, not yeah. do a bad word against them right now. They I think that what you'll see, I think that could have an impact on Sony's business, though. I mean, the, the hardcore kids have a PlayStation 3 at this point, or they're just waiting for a price drop to get one. They're sold. They're going to get one. They know the games are good. It's the casual people who have yet to really latch on to the PlayStation 3. So games to us that were like, whatever, another Guitar Hero, another Marvel Ultimate Alliance, the Transformers game, the Wolverine game... All the stuff that Activision does with their licensed stuff, I think that could be a huge hole for the more casual Dude, player. Look at the sales for Wolverine. It was in the toilet. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we discussed this last week. Wolverine's in the toilet. Transformers is going to be, you know, it's going to be a bag of <laughs> just like the last yeah. ones. I mean, outside of the Ultimate Alliance series. But think back to the PlayStation 2 era. 85% of games on the PlayStation 2 were shite. They were. I mean, they were terrible. I mean, that's... It's the breadth of the content that gets the casual person to buy well, the hardware. I also think, I mean, we're now we're just making this more about Sony than Activision, but um, people, you know, analysts were thinking if the economy had totally bombed last year, that last year was going to be the year for Blu-rays, and it wasn't. Yeah. But, but when that does happen, the PlayStation 3, is, especially for families, is going to seem like a tremendous deal. That's the, Sony's that's not the only one struggling the family right now. I mean, everybody's, everybody's, All we, the sales are starting. In the last three months, every single platform has taken a hit, except for the DS, which I don't, I don't even know. Hardware. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, but all the, the other hardware have all dipped. And it's still, sell, you know, it's still selling in excess of, was it 1.2 million units a year? You know that's going to go up. This year, in particular, as we reach into Christmas, especially you know, like I said, there's a slim coming guy up. But what do you think yeah. about uh, what do you think about Valve not supporting the PS3? You know what? It, uh, Valve have a perfectly happy, healthy system where they make a lot of money on the PC, they make a lot of money on the Xbox. It works for them architecture-wise because they were primarily PC. These guys have always been multi-format. I don't think Valve is missed on the PS3. I honestly don't think Activision would be missed on the PS3 either because the PS3 fanboys who are vociferously committed to their platform, they will not go, you know, they will say, you know what, 
fuck you. I'm going to go out and buy ba uh, Rock Band. I'm going to go out and buy Scratch. I'm going to go out and buy Skate. I'm going to go out and buy Ghost Recon or Rainbow Six or Battlefield 1943 because EA is supporting my console, and that's what I'm going to do. And I think I think there'd be a lot of salty Sony fans out there if they didn't get Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> those guys are already pretty salty. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, yes, they'll get Modern Warfare 2. But what about Modern, Modern Warfare, Warfare 3? 3? Same deal. But you know what? They're also, you know, they, they will pitch a fit at Activision. They won't pitch a fit at us. They won't pitch a fit at Sony. So this is, Act this is Activision running wild, trying to slap its metaphorical dick out. And I, I also want to reiterate something that, you know, I touched on a couple of weeks ago where I'm actually unhappy with supporting Activision right now. People have said, oh, you're going to cancel your World of Warcraft account because I've seen these messages on Facebook. The big difference is that even though it's Activision Blizzard, Blizzard is a wholly run, you know, totally separately run company. Different CEOs, different structures. And when I was at Vivendi, I mean, Blizzard was like that then. You know, we had our bonus structure and Blizzard sales wasn't taken into it. You know, they are their own unique company and they are the golden boys. They cannot be touched. And, and they're the going to make Diablo Vivendi. 3. <laughs> Diablo 3 for the PS3. I think it's just a big bluff, personally. I think he's just yeah. he's probably this. jet lagged. He's like, oh, "Times of London." No, I think I think I think he's just <laughs> okay. I think he's on a major ego trip right now. He's just been, you know, he, he's in a position of power. And again, this was a company that six, seven years ago shares were in the toilet. Now yeah. they're trading really quite well. And I think you know he's just also setting up for potentially a bad winter for these guys, with the exception of Modern Warfare Two, where uh, Tony Hawk doesn't sell, the DJ Hero doesn't sell. Guitar, the new Guitar Hero game doesn't sell. Yeah. They may not shift this Christmas because people can buy it. You know, buy these uh, by the music games used. They may not have the interest in. Um, well, maybe he's DJ just setting Hero. up a, a shareholder uh, whipping boy. You like you're saying, like well, he maybe he doesn't really believe this, but then when shareholders are like, blame the PS3, we didn't sh sell the units. Uh, you know, what? I I really. I think it's just stupid of him, and I think this time next year we'll be seeing all this stuff again. He's bl he's obviously bluffing, Total and if he bluff. isn't bluff bluffing, the head people at the Vivendi Group, who control Universal Music and all these other things, they'll be looking to replace his ass really quick. Uh, uh, what's going on? Uh, 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 that's my blood. That's my blood. It's a lot of my blood. What? Next up, one of your favorite segments that we don't do as often as we probably should. It is on the hook where we answer your questions and we have a bevy. I think we're going to be answering Veritable a lot of questions bushel. this summer with nothing out. No yeah, games with no out. games, we're going to be answering a lot of your questions in the coming weeks. But first, we have one from Patrick Morales. All right, this one is from Psycho Shadow with an S Y K O for Psycho. <laughs> Long story short, uh, do you think that the trend of using an everyman or everyday guy will keep going on in games or fade away? Are some developers maybe running out of concepts for unique characters, so they're falling back on just making their characters some regular person? And he references Alan Wake, yeah. Infamous, Uncharted, etc. Uh, as for <laughs> fading away, I highly doubt that. They've been around for a while. They've yeah, they've been around longer than you know. Been in bald space marines. Yeah, actually, most of these guys are bald, aren't they? Oh yeah, <laughs> the infamous I, guy. I, I think that there's a two-thirds bald to hair ratio there. It's a lot easier to, to model a shaved head than it is to model hair without it looking like crap. Yeah, and I mean the reason they do that is because people find self-insert characters fun to play as because you right. know you, you can be that person. It is a little bit lazy. I mean, it's a whole lot easier to make an everyman kind of character than it is a unique personality. Like you can't come but up with. But isn't it harder to create an everyman character that's interesting? That than to just create some whacked out character with some crazy costume. I feel that I it, don't know how how everyman are these characters though. I mean, yeah, look at she's lightning bolt out of his hands. <laughs> well, no, I mean the, the whole thing like anyone could like this could happen to you. you yeah, could yeah, wake right. up with powers. But I mean, Drake has a, a pretty distinct personality where he's like you know. But like, he still is the everyday guy. He doesn't have like superhuman strength or. He's got some grip. Yeah, I, I don't think I could. Well, hang. At the end of the day, he's an adventure archaeologist, but I think it's, it's these sort of characters are aspirational. Ellen Wake's a hard I think this writer. question means like a Mario or a Jack and Daxter versus a human being. I think that's well, really I, what the I think it means. Comes you know, Mario, Jack and Daxter, Master Chief, you know, Marcus Phoenix, those guys, as opposed to 
Alan Marcus Wade, Phoenix is, like, is an everyday guy. But he's, I don't think he's an everyday guy. He's, a, he's an everyday sport, boiled, uh, was a bold space marine with you know who's got this intense combat. Yeah, he training. falls on the space marine side I mean, of things. You, just let's look at Infamous, where you've got this guy who is a courier, who is thru- you know just a regular guy who is then thrust into the middle of this. You but know, I think thing. he's referring to ha- like something distinct, where you can look at that person and say they look interesting. I don't think he's. Ta- I think he's talking about more than just looking at the visuals. I think he's talking about the character as well. And I think this is a trick that Hollywood's been doing for years, where you have this, you know, regular guy who is stuck in the the middle of this out of control situation, and you, you know, you, you know, you end up watching him trying to survive to save his kids, to save his dog, to save his underpants, whatever you need to do. But that's what Hollywood has been doing for a number of years with a lot of these movies. And this is where games, you know, this is going to be around for a long time. Yeah, I mean, there, there are varying degrees of what an everyman is in a game. Um, I think the times when they pull that trope successfully is when they manage to build a good environment to support that everyman. I mean, Bioshock, the main guy, he's an everyman. Doesn't even have that much dialogue. My name's Jack. Yeah. Got a but, tattoo on my wrist. But they, they make it pull off because you really do feel like you're just a regular person thrown into this unbelievable circumstance. Well, it's, I mean, the other argument is, think about, like, how many games, this, this happened a lot more in the past, like, with adventure games, where you started with amnesia. Because then you don't have to explain all this backstory or anything and right. just go forward, you know? It's, it's an, yeah, it's a thing people have been doing since the dawn of time with stories. But to answer Psycho Shadow's question, like, honestly, interesting characters have fallen by the wayside. I mean, you don't see a lot of brand new characters like you saw back in the PlayStation 2. And mm, but I'd still say, like, Drake has a lot of personality. But I'm saying... He's not like a blank I, slate. I think, I think, again, I think we're answering the wrong question here. I don't think he's asking, like, what you think he's asking. I think he's asking, like, mascots, crazy, kooky characters versus oh, well, if he's Joe asking, human being. I think if he's asking that, I think the age of the mascot has changed. I'm not yes. going to say it's dead, but it's changed. I mean, you got Sackboy. You want to talk about an everyman. You can slap whatever stickers you want on him, even though he doesn't look like a real human being or anything like that. I think back to even five years ago, I mean, probably at least 50% of games had some kind of a mascot, quote, unquote, as a lead character. Now it's yeah. all just some dude yeah. who may or may not have superpowers, but they unless look it, just it, like us. Unless it's a Wii game. Right. And I think Psycho Shadow will probably be, as soon as he hears this, he'll actually be posting on the, on the thread to, you know, the comment section to clarify his question. So yep. maybe we can revisit it in a couple of weeks. <laughs> And if we run out of bullets, baby, they gonna wish we had. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show, episode sixty-three in the books. I want to thank the person who decided to create the doppelganger Facebook profile who sent me a friend invite. Yeah, I get this friend invite from Shane Satterfield, and I'm like, what the hell? Oh, I'm like, God, no. I'm like, who's this bastard that created it? That's I an episode of Twilight Zone. It was somebody trying to be nice, because in last week's show, I was like, you know what? I should create a separate profile so I can accept invites from the fans. So I sent him this message. I'm like, dude, what are you doing trying to steal my identity? I already have him, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, two days later, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I was trying to be nice. So anyway, nice the on the internet, yeah. Whoever that was, I actually I would prefer if you could delete it so I can create my own fake profile. So if you could get that off the interwebs, that'd be great. <laughs> Otherwise, everyone, please go join our Facebook group. Please dig the show. Definitely the best thing you can do for the show if you like it. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Whatever you may do, and we'll see you next week with a very special episode. All questions from you guys. A full episode of On the Hook in honor of July 4th. It's going to be a little bit shorter than most of our episodes, but it'll still be worth watching, so keep an eye out for that. Invisible Walls. Ooh.